Um, my, one of the businesses that I ran used to run competitions and it only made money if people who signed up to the competitions were too lazy to untick a tick box which allowed us to then sell that data on to a third party. I mean, that still happens, um, despite you know, European legislation and, and the like. Um, but that, that data is of much less value um, to anyone now, because there are now these big resources of data. Um, I, I think they're Facebook and they're Google. And those two companies know more about their customers and us as individuals. Um, than probably any companies have in history. Maybe Tesco Club Card knows quite a lot as well. Um, I think that consumers are more and more willing to actually hand over bits of their personal information to companies that they know, companies that they trust, if they're given a good enough reason for it. I think that one of the challenges that some consumers would have with having Google is that it's really it's not always clear why you needed to know the information. So of course my emails would go back for six years. 100%, I really want to know them, I really want to have access to them in five years' time. But every ad I clicked from the last three years, that makes, that makes money for Google, but what's the clear benefit for me as a consumer? As it goes, the Google Dashboard product, which is designed to allow you to take control of your data, can be really useful. So I use it the whole time to find websites that I forgot what the website address was that I visited, or the ad that I clicked. Um, but what's weird is that Google don't really sh go out and shout about that. And I think that potentially as consumers become both more savvy and willing to part with data, they'll, they'll expect more about companies, about companies expressing to them really clearly, well, A, I'm taking this data, and B, this is what I'm using it for, and C, um, this is how, how holding this data can benefit you as the consumer just as much as it can benefit me to sell much more targeted adverts. I think the other place that has data, which is really clear, is Facebook. I think the reason for having Facebook having the data is much more apparent to the user, which is why we give much more information about ourselves there. Um, if, if I was to look at what I've got on my Facebook, um, I joined it as soon as it became open to people who weren't at university, so late 2006, and it's got everyone that I'm friends with. Well, sorry, it starts off with my, my educational history, the history of all of the companies I've worked for. It then knows all of my friends, who all my friends are. It knows my past relationship <laughs> history. It has photographs of me tagged all around the world, um, sometimes with location data. But the photographs reveal information about my friends that you might not think about, which is that even if I'm not friends with someone, you can tell who I know because I'm tagged in the same photo as them. And Facebook are able to know who's a more important friend to me in the same photo then. So some of my friends, I don't actually talk to you very much on Facebook, but I still see the, their information pretty high up because it knows, well, I obviously see, you, see them a lot in the real world. And something I should explain, a lot of people don't think about it, is when you log on to Facebook, you see that what you see is called your top news. Now that top news is based on Facebook's edge rank algorithm, which is fantastic. What it does is it looks at how many times you talk to someone on Facebook, how many times you comment on someone's link or posting on Facebook, how many times you chat to each other, how many times you tag in the same photo. And it uses that to show you information about the people that are most relevant to you. So I have like 500 friends on Facebook, some people I never hear from in my wall, other than when they get married or break up or have a child or something. Because it knows that that's probably important to everyone. But that's a lot of information that that, that company has over it, has over it. And some people think that that's a big, big change. When you think about it, it sort of is. But is it really? In the old days, sort of 200 years ago, you here's an analogy. Um, <laughs> sort of, I, I, you, you normally were kind of born and died and worked in the same place. So you you brought up in a place. You didn't do what you did. So you went from Seattle to, to London. Um, and because you born and brought up in the same place, people know a lot about you. They know all sorts of information about you. Everyone knows about everyone else's lives. But we now live much more complicated lives. And so for the last sort of like 30 years, we were able to live relatively anonymously. So you could go and move to London, and no one would know about your, your back history. Um, they wouldn't know everything you did. Nowadays, Facebook kind of returns us to this kind of this, this, this old world where we can know everything about everyone based on what they've done on Facebook. 
it does make actually though when you meet people a bit less exciting because you kind of you meet you meet someone and then you know you become Facebook friends with them and then actually uh, do I need to hear all your backstory? No, I can just quickly flip through the kind of the, the photo highlights of your life and people can see me that like I used no I don't need to explain people I I used to be four stone heavier because all they need to do is go back to the photos of me from 2006 and see what you did. Then it can then it can ask the question like what. What, what, how did, how did you, how did you lose weight? Um, but, look, that's all great. So obviously I think Facebook's quite good, no question mark. Um, but there are big, but think about what Facebook now enables third party businesses to do. So you can now use Facebook Connect on your website to, to let people instantly sign up to your service and allow me to share my information with third parties, people I might never have heard of actually. The Facebook kind of, they tread a really interesting line that they, they step two, forward, two steps forward and they, and they kind of go back one and a half steps. So yesterday they started allowing third party websites, to, third party applications to see your home address and your home phone number. And then someone, some people started saying, well, there's a lot of spammy applications that you click OK to and you, you accept and look, aren't the privacy settings a bit complicated, so now they've turned that back off again. And they, 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 last year there was so much press coverage about that their privacy policy was so long, longer than the US um, Constitution, and there were 150 <laughs> privacy options. And you know, I did, I did quite a few pieces uh, knocking them for that. But then, to their credit, I think, they then said, no, let's actually simplify this. It's still pretty complicated, though. Um, and I think that that's something they're going to have to grapple with, as are all the companies that, that use that information. And there's this other thing, I, kind of, I was on the radio a couple of like two weeks ago justifying Facebook's $50 billion valuation. I think that was a lot more. Um, and I said, that, I just a joke, that leaving Facebook is like learning Esperanto and expecting your friends to still understand you. Meaning that you can't jump to another social network, like so if Google actually finding it around for launching the lovely <laughs> someone. Um, I, I'm not going to join it because all my friends are already on Facebook. And I've got all that shared history, the 500, the 500 friends, the photographs, everything else there. But that also means that it makes you question what choice people have over to join it and the privacy policies that lie behind it. So when someone reaches 13 years old, tend to want to join Facebook. I'm now allowed to join Facebook. If I wanted to be, if I wanted to join Urquhart, Google's one, why would I? Even if the privacy policies are better, even if I wanted to join Diaspora, a new social network or path or any of, any of the other ones that have sprung up. I'm not going to because everyone I know in my, in my life, in the people who matter to me, are on Facebook. So if I have to join Facebook, do the, do the terms and conditions and the privacy policies that underlie it, are they fair? And I think there's something as Facebook grows, they're going to they're gonna have to justify it more and more and more. Um, the only other kind of thought is obviously security is really important. I think that um, Companies obviously need to think about that. But that, that where, you, where did you go though, that's actually quite scary. And it made me realise why I don't put, I, I don't, I no longer say where I go on Twitter or Facebook. So I've just been in America um, to go to visit Microsoft and on to Groupon. And I, so I was in Seattle and Chicago. But I didn't tweet at all whilst I was there, other than retweeting a few things. And I didn't put on Facebook, other than, oh, actually I did put on Facebook, I'll explain why. Um, I, I did tweet because I don't want people to know my house is my house is empty. Please go in and burgle me. Or just found it a bit creepy. People know. And someone said to me, "But you're crazy. When you're live on Channel Four News, there's like a million people seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at home." But I, I, I figure that yeah, okay. But they don't know I'm not going to be at home, um, which is probably when I'm going to be burgled. But like, I have now, and I didn't, wasn't doing it on Facebook, because it actually, whenever I put it on Facebook, <coughs> I was, my grandparents would send me a Facebook message saying, very worried that you're sharing your, your address. <laughs> and, uh, so now I've created a new, a new like, use one of the new features where it allows you to put group, group lists of friends. So I've created a, a list of sort of about 90 people, but I'm 100% sure they're not going to burgle my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't put my grandparents on that list. <laughs> They're not, they're not, they're not sending messages. I think that, the, but the thing is, I mean, that tool is great, but again, Facebook aren't really out there shouting about, here's all the different tools and, and, and products that you can use to help control your privacy. So I think that the big challenge for, for both companies and for anyone else in this sector is just communicating, here's how to control it, here's why, and this is why we've got your data, and this is how it benefits you.
Smith Thank you.